appease the crowd and provide. First of all, I gotta take time out to thank my Lord and Savior God for everything He did for me. Bless me to be here tonight. Bless me to finish my album up and bless me with the skills that I have to perform. Yes, I feel like I deserve to come out tonight and give the crowd what they're paying for because some guys seem to be forgetting and thinking that I'm a nice guy or something. I am nice, but I'm awful crucial with these hands. What's up, Pensacola in the house? What's up, Jersey, D.C., all my people all over the world, baby, Patterson, New York, everybody. What's up, people? Pensacola in the house, though. Roy, how much of your motivation tonight, if any, had to do with Shane Mosley's loss last week and Bernard Hopkins' appearance on this network earlier this evening? Oh, uh, that had nothing to do with neither one of those. Uh, I take my head off to Shane because Shane fought a tough fight. Um, he did his thing. He tried. Uh, he'll come back and he'll do good things. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, you know, Bernard Hopkins is still the same old Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins needs Roy Jones to make a fight. Roy Jones don't need Bernard Hopkins. I can entertain with anything. I take what comes my way pound for pound. That man, 188 pounds tonight. I'm 182. Bernard don't want to mess with me, man. I'm trying to be nice about this. Then I beat him. What the hell I got to spend 50-50 with him for? He ain't never beat me. He ain't never beat nobody. He got one name on his record. Felix Trinidad, that's it. The other name on his record he got, he lost to. That ain't worth a damn to me. I don't want to hear that. He gonna give me 64, he ain't fight me. I'm pound for pound, the baddest man throwing down. Fights faster than other fighters. Talks faster than other fighters, too. Hello, Mario. You believed yesterday that Glenn Kelly was gonna come out and try to jump in your face, get up on you and rough you up. Instead, he seemed to want to stay back and away from you. Could the knockout have come earlier if he had been more aggressive? Yeah, if he came on, if he came at me earlier, the knockout would have occurred earlier. But man, admit the truth, Larry. I mean, Jim, admit it. You know, I look five times better than a Bernard Hopkins and anybody else that you've seen in the last 12 years. Understand? I've been doing this. I ain't been up and fell off. I've been through the Lennox Lewis era, the Nassim Hamed era, the Sugar Shane Moses era, the Austin De La Hoya era. Mark Antonio Barrera, I've been through all the errors, and I've still been here. Give me mine. Boy, Bernard, when you fight like this, it's there. tough to argue the point. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the knockout. And and Harold Letterman says to me that the referee was on the verge of warning you for grabbing the ropes. I went down, I was chicken fighting. I went in, but behind my back, I was chicken the fighting. I was the game rooster then. That's that chicken fighting stuff. You did that to make him come at you, right? I had to make him commit. He didn't want to commit, so I had to give him the chicken thing. I ain't looking for no rope. That's a chicken wing. You know what I'm saying? Watch him. Come here. Don't do that. Ha! Huh? Come here now. Huh? Y'all must have forgot. Is that going to go on the highlight reel? You got to. Y'all hey. must have forgot. Y'all must have forgot. Go get that album, baby. February 26th. Y'all must have forgot. In stores. Do that for Roy J. All right. So off of your bitter discussion before the fight with Bernard Hopkins, uh, obviously you're making clear that a fight with Hopkins could only take place if you get the lion's share of the money. And he seems to be saying that ain't going to happen. Does that mean the fight ain't going to happen? That's what that means. That means I'm going to go to HBO Monday, to HBO to give me some money. Let me go over to Germany and make this thing happen with Darius Mika Chester since he wants some. I also like to dedicate this fight to a friend of mine, uh, Ernest Prince Sr. He passed away while I was in training camp. So I couldn't be to the funeral, but, you know, we all have that happen sometime. And happy, happy birthday to Jay, little girl. Yeah. Roy, you know, I enjoyed working with you as an expert commentator so much that I want you to... You want to narrate the Hopkins uh, highlights yeah, with me? Yeah, come on. Come all on. right, come give, on. Me the, give me the highlight sheet here. Mike, you don't have it? I must have lost it. All right, earlier this evening in Reading, Pennsylvania, Bernard Hopkins entered in his uh, executioner's mask to take on outmatched Southpaw opponent Carl Daniels. And uh, this was a matter of Bernard wearing down Daniels largely with body shots throughout the fight. What did you think? Add to the fact that, add to the fact that Daniels ain't fought in 13 months. How did he get to be number one contender? He ain't even fought in 13 months. He got knocked out, I think, last time he fought when he fought Julio Cesar Vasquez, and Bernard Hopkins couldn't even knock him out. You got three middleweights that was knocking down Felix Trinidad inside four rounds. It took him 11 rounds to do it. He cannot beat me. Quit making him boost his head up. He want a payday. Now, he ain't finna retire with Roy Jones. Roy Jones fought that. What's up, Bigham? I told my dad. The only thing I'll say, he wouldn't think much of your opponent either. Well, he ain't got to. He was undefeated. It's better than his opponent. My opponent ain't had no loss on his record. He just got one. What's up, Tarver? Matter of fact, I might fight Antonio Tarver next time. He deserves a shot quick. Because he's standing does. nine feet away he's over there, right? right? That's right. I'll fight. <laughs> Antonio Tarver's an awfully big, light heavyweight. I don't give a damn. That was a big one I fought. Now, I don't give a damn. Right. Hey, one more thing. Before the seventh round, your trainer, Alton Merkerson, said, by God, go knock the man out. We got somewhere else to go. Where you got to go? 
Uh, I got some parties to go do with my friends in Miami. I got some new friends. I'm in the South Beach. All fans of Roy Jones Jr., the Cash from Club level, the people that came out supporting me in my performance the other night. I got to go hang out with them. I'm Pitting invited too, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Part of the way he's joining Thank you, RJ. And Roy Jones obviously looking ahead to that fight with Bernard Hopkins. He's absolutely obsessed now with this fight with Bernard Hopkins. As we saw before the fight with Kelly, he got very upset and we thought that, that might actually be detriment to, to Glenn Kelly there. I get the impression though, Matthew, he doesn't really think that Bernard Hopkins deserves another chance at him though, do you? Well, you sort of get that feeling, but I think Hopkins does deserve the chance. I mean, coming off the victory over Felix Trinidad, of course, and against Carl Daniels, it wasn't an outstanding performance and probably didn't set it up as a, a big super fight, which everybody's hoping it will become, but uh, it was a good performance nonetheless against a quality opponent. Still, Matthew, you have to say that what we saw today, Roy Jones Jr., the most supreme fighter on the planet, and, and on all-time great, we're going to look back to in 20, 30 years' time and say... Roy Jones Jr. was one of the best of the history of the sport. And Glenn Kelly, well, it took him a couple of rounds to get into it. He was always seemed to be on the defence, Glenn, and uh, you got the feeling that maybe if he'd been able to just pe pre press it a little bit more, he had the height and the reach and, of course, the size advantage over Jones. But uh, Jones really was a class above Glenn Kelly today. Glenn showed his toughness, and we know that he was very tough, and he, he performed well in that aspect. But just the hand speed, you could see that Roy Jones was so much faster, and, and Glenn didn't have much, uh, couldn't really handle that sort of speed. And he did land a couple of punches, but he just couldn't catch him. Roy is so good. It's not that Glenn, is, Glenn Kelly is such a bad fighter, it's Roy is a supreme boxer. And it'll be very interesting to see now what Glenn Kelly actually does. He's, he's reached the pinnacle. Everything would be on the downslide, you would think, at this stage. Well, it's no shame in losing to a Roy Jones Jr. because he's so good, but it depends what Glenn wants to do. Does he want to continue with his career, take this experience and maybe come back a bit better in the future? Now, of course, Bernard Hopkins does want this fight against Jones and there, there will be a lot of money involved in the fight. They last fought back in 1993, a long time ago. Hopkins is saying that he's a totally different fighter and judging from his performance against Felix Trinidad, you would think that. I've always thought Hopkins seems to fight to the level of his opponent. We saw him today fight to the level of Carl Daniels. Uh, still, still won very impressively, even though we, I was expecting a little bit more from him. And when he fights a Roy Jones Jr., maybe he can step up that level and he is a better fighter than back in 1993 when they had their first fight. Yeah, and it was vintage Jones today um, against Glenn Kelly and uh, really you wonder how much better he can get. I still think that there is a lot of improvement there. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a one-off fight, obviously. But uh, with Jones and Hopkins, you can think that HBO is going to put a lot, a lot of money on the table for Roy Jones Jr. and make it very, very enticing for him to fight Bernard Hopkins. Well, we're going to take a break and be back to wrap up right after this. Now, of course, besides the Hopkins-Jones fight, which uh, is looming sometime in the future, there's some other great match-ups match coming. Of course, we've got the Barrera-Morales fight, which should be a beauty. Definitely a great matchup that one. Two Mexican Warriors and also Australian Robbie Peden fighting for a world title eliminator on the undercard, Matthew. Now we're not sure at this stage whether the Tyson Lewis fight is going to go ahead. Uh, Tyson's still yet to be licensed, but uh, should that fight go ahead, it's going to be a fantastic fight, and just the interest alone in that fight will make it massive. Even more after what happened at the press conference, Matthew, uh, Tyson not getting a license in Nevada, but they are applying in California, and still a lot of interest for that fight to go ahead to be the fight of the year. And of course our own Kost Yazoo, well he's going to be back in the ring later in the year against Ben Tacky, and again for Kost, a defence of his undisputed title. Uh, looks like it'll be May 18 for that fight. And Ben Tacky, a very credible opponent. He's going to come straight ahead, a big puncher, and another test for Costa Zoo. Well, Paul, it wasn't a great day for Glenn Kelly, but it was a good fight card nonetheless. Great for the Australian boxing fans. Great card and another great day for boxing, Matthew. Well, Paul, thanks for joining me. Great to be here, Matthew. And that's about all we have time for. So until next time, take it easy and bye for now.